Centuries ago, a dying, wicked king pleaded for help from the Druids of Gaia. When they refused, the king cast a curse on the Valley of Life, spreading blight and pestilence throughout the sacred land. In response, the Druid Council sent Druids into the valley. Blessed by Gaia herself, these Druids were tasked with restoring the Valley of Life to its former glory. Welcome to Mystic Vale! Mystic Vale is a card crafting game for 2-4 to four players from AEG. Players will take on the role of Druids trying to restore beauty and life to the dying Valley of Life. Will you be able to heal the decay and bring vibrance and prosperity back? Or will you attempt to heal too quickly and end up with a spoiled land? Let's find out in Mystic Vale! To start, each player will select a deck of 20 sleeved cards in the color of their choice. Shuffle them and place it face down in front of them. Now set up the comments. Take the level 1 advancement deck indicated with a singular white dot under the cost in the upper right hand corner. Shuffle them and remove the number of cards as indicated. In a 2 player game remove 12 random cards. In a 3 player game remove 15 random cards. And in a 4 player game remove 18 random cards. Place the deck face down and reveal 3 cards. Shuffle the level 2 advancement deck indicated with the 2 white dots under the cost. Place it face down above the level 1 deck and reveal 3 random cards. Do the same for the level 3 advancement deck, indicated with 3 white dots under the cost. Separate the veil cards into level 1 and level 2 decks. Shuffle the level 1 deck, place it face down near the commons and reveal the top 4 cards. Do the same with the level 2 deck. Set the extra fertile soils in reach of all players. Place the indicated number of victory tokens in a pool. In a 2 player game, there will be 23 tokens, in a 3 player game there will be 28 tokens, and in a 4 player game there will be 33 tokens. Determine the starting player by shuffling the number of mana tokens equal to the number of players, making sure that the token with the starting symbol is included, and deal one to each player with the active side up. Players return the tokens over to the spent side, and the player with the starting symbol goes first. Now you are ready to play. Players will start the game by creating their starting fields. Your field will have four locations, your deck, your field, your discard pile, and your on-deck card. Reveal the top card of your deck and place it face up on top. This is your on-deck card. Then place your on-deck card into your field and turn over a new card. Do this until you have two cursed lands in your field and one on deck. turn consists of four phases, planting, harvest, discard, and prep. During the planting phase, you must choose to either pass or push. If you choose to pass, skip directly to the harvest phase. If you decide to push, place your on-deck card into your field. Resolve any of the win played abilities on the card, then flip over the next card. If you reveal another decay symbol, you have spoiled. Your field will spoil when you have four decay symbols revealed. However, there are many advancement cards with growth symbols that will cancel a decay symbol out. If you spoil, you will move straight to your discard phase and flip your mana token to the active side. If you do not spoil, you can continue pushing or move on to the harvest phase. The harvest phase is where you count up your mana, spirit symbols, resolve harvest abilities in your field, score victory tokens, buy veil cards, and buy advancements. These can be done in any order. Let's take a closer look at the cards. Advancement cards will always have the title, the cost in the top right corner, and the level pips below it. Some cards will have abilities. These will either be listed at the bottom of the picture or down the side of the card. If they are listed at the bottom, they will always be visible, so they will always be active. If it is down the side of it, whichever ability is on top is the active ability. Victory points can be located in two different locations. Either in the top left corner, these will be collected during the harvest phase, or the bottom right corner. These are collected at the end of the game. 
There are four different types of symbols that can be present on a card. Mana symbols will be located on the left side of the card. Spirit symbols will be located at the left side of the card. Decay symbols will also be located at the left side of the card. Finally, guardian symbols will be located in the bottom left corner of the picture. Veil cards will have the title at the top, the spirit symbol cost in the upper right hand corner, the level in the lower left hand corner, its ability at the bottom, and its victory point worth in the bottom right hand corner. First, you should resolve any harvest abilities listed on your cards and score any victory points in your field. The victory points will come from the blue symbol on the left of the card, not the gray symbol on the right of the card. If you have victory points to collect, take that number of tokens from the pool. In order to buy advancement cards, you have to have mana points to spend. Simply count up the number of mana symbols in your field, including those given to you by harvest abilities. Your on-deck card does not count. For example, in my starting field, I have two mana symbols. So I have two mana to spend in the commons or on fertile soils. Once you've counted up your mana, you can spend it on advancement cards or fertile soils. You can buy up to two advancement cards during your turn. Your leftover mana will not carry over to the next harvest phase. However, if your mana token is active and you choose not to use your extra mana, that will stay active until you use it. Veil cards can be bought with spirit symbols. Count up the number and type of spirit symbols in your field. There are four different types of symbols. Animal, forest, sky, and wild. If a veil card has a rainbow wild spirit, you can use any symbol for that symbol. Veil cards cannot be used on the same term that they are bought. At the start of the discard phase, Sleep all newly acquired advancements by sliding them into the sleeve of the card in your field. Keep in mind that you cannot cover an already present advancement, but you can cover an ability that runs the length of the card. Then, discard all cards in your field face down. Do not discard your on-deck card. Now replenish any Veil and Common cards you bought. If you run out of level 1 advancements, replace the empty spaces with level 2s, and likewise, if you run out of level 2 advancements, replace them with level 3s. The prep phase can be done at different times. To make the game go faster, you can begin your prep phase at the end of your turn while the next player takes their turn. You can also choose to wait until the player has completely finished their prep phase before the next player takes their turn. The prep phase is done exactly how your starting field was. However, you may now have cards that have a win played ability. If you have a card with a win played ability, it must be done when the card is placed into the field. Keep playing cards until you have three decay symbols showing. It is possible now to have more than one decay symbol on a card. If you were to have two decay symbols in your field and you drew a card with two decay symbols on it, that would give you four decay symbols and you would immediately spoil. The end game is triggered when the victory tokens in the pool run out. Finish the round and begin scoring. If players gain tokens after the pool has run out, take them from the leftover tokens in the box. You score points in three ways. Tokens, gray victory point symbols on advancements, and victory point symbols on the veil cards. Add up the total number of points on all cards and tokens. Whoever has the most points is the winner. If there is a tie, the player with the most combined level 3 advancements and level 2 rail cards is the winner. If there is still a tie, players share the win. And that's Mystic Veil. Vale.